Hello and welcome. Here we have a 5.5 horsepower Johnson outboard. The year doesn't really matter for, well, two reasons. One, I forgot what it is. And two, they only made 5.5s from uh, in the 50s to early 60s. And they all use the top mounted starter. They may look different, but the process is all the same for the five and a half horsepower outboards. The year doesn't matter, but I think it's a 60. Might be a 61, might be a 59. I don't know, it's not a 59. I don't know. Anyway, so my last video, I was out cruising around in the uh, water, or at least trying to, and the starter broke. However, it didn't break. It just didn't retract. And the way it's designed, it might as well have broken because it was nearly useless. Actually, thankfully, the starter rope didn't break. Let's, let's back up on that one. Because of the top-mounted starter, you can't get a starter rope on there to manually start it with, you know, a shoelace unless you have the tools to remove the starter housing, which I didn't have. So luckily the rope didn't break. I was able to rewind the thing in there and then start it on that next pull and I never shut it off again. But either way, don't want to go through that again because I like the starter functioning. So we're gonna fix it. Using the stand today for your viewing pleasure and because I don't feel like cleaning off my desk. So yeah, that might make some for some better views. I have over here my table with the tools I might need, typical when working on an old outboard. So we'll see uh, what we need as we go. The cutting torch grinder and crowbar was a joke. Yeah, when an outboard's this clean, looks like this and you don't see any rust or anything, usually you don't have any hardware issues. We have three screws holding our starter housing on. and pop those off. This one, they are 3 8 with a slotted screwdriver slot in them. But usually that slot doesn't work out too well because the screws are pretty tight. The flathead usually doesn't fit in there quite easily. And off comes our starter housing. I notice I'm missing a screw there. I have to find that. See if we can reduplicate our problem. Yeah, that's freak. that starter feels just amazing. The tightness, everything about it is just perfect. Ooh, right there, it sticks a little bit, so that's probably where I got stuck. But geez, that starter looking good. All right. As you can see, it's disgusting underneath. Oh, what do I got here? A crack? No, just a casting. So, yeah, this, uh, this kind of sucks because... It works, it works great. All right, there's a hole right here. At certain point along the starter, you can get a little rivet or something in there, like my rivet to hold the starter rope in for you. See what I mean? So that's what I'm gonna do. My plan, I don't know if this is gonna work. I wanna save the original rope, if I can. Gonna see if I can't get away with just cutting that knot off, pulling the handle out, which I should be able to. So I pulled the rivet out. I'm just gonna slowly let this thing unwind. off of it. Get the C-clip off somehow. It should be noted here that simply WD fording this spring up would probably fix it. It would rejuvenate whatever grease is in there and it would probably work fine for us. In a pinch, I would do that, and then probably never come back to it again until it failed. Glad I'm here. So I'm cleaning that spring and putting it back together. So 
center bolt comes off. We don't have a nut on the back side, just so you know. So we have a bolt, small washer, and a big washer. Our inner nut thing comes off, revealing our plate, which looks just incredible, and our spring, and our somewhat sticky grease. Okay, I don't think I recorded any of that, did I? Anywho, I got a flathead, and I pried up the little tiny tab that was right there, and then I just lifted the spring off, but carefully so it wouldn't blow up in my face. Okay. This is a gallon of carb cleaner. Gonna dump the spring in there. I'll be unwinding the bottom a little bit. I'll let it soak in for a little while. I have some PB Blaster Liquid Wrench WD-40 3-in-1 oil. I'm going to spray it onto the grease spots on the housing. This will awaken that old grease and allow me to clean it off mostly. Same thing for this. I've never I've never seen this before, but what I'm noticing is how every edge on this piece the starter, uh, I forget what it's called, polyol, Paul. Yeah, this piece, everything is sharp. These corners are just razor sharp. This inside is razor sharp. This edge is just full of burrs that just sharp. The outer is as well, as well as the inside. Everything about this is just sharp. I, I've handled many of these and I've never seen one that sharp. That could be because time wears them down. I don't know, but this is odd. So I'm just gonna get some sandpaper and basically come around and deburr this thing. I don't cut myself because this is this thing is like a series of razor blades. It seems like when it comes to the chamfer of these parts, the factory really cut some corners. No, not funny. Uh, anyway, a little tight. No biggie. Okay, let's get this spring out of here. Now, realistically, you don't need car cleaner for this. I just kind of do it so I can do other stuff while it self cleans. All right, I got my rag. So I'm just gonna give it a wipe down as I go. You can see some of the old grease right there. Spring is clean and dried. We're gonna put some grease on it. Put grease where it was originally, right above these two little, I don't know, nylon indent things. Probably don't need that much. Oh, I should probably mention the grease. I'm using this uh, white lithium grease. The factory called for, I believe, loop rate 777, which is also a starter lube, they, I believe they called it as well, in later, earlier years. Uh, that stuff, I mean, you can buy it still, buy the 50-gallon drum, and it's like $1,000. 
and and ain't nobody buying that stuff. The thing I don't like about it is it's great for a year or two, and then it starts breaking down. I have some of that stuff new in packaging that's, you know, from the 80s, and it's already just, it comes out as just glue. It's just, I mean, it's good stuff when it's new, but once it gets old, it's really just trash. So we're going to wind this spring back in here, which won't be easy. That doable. All right, let's, let's do it this way. tight loop there. Let's go a little tighter with it. Get it started on this pin and push it in. Perfect. Nothing to it, right? Put some grease on the spring in places and hopefully it works its way it's round, around. Just make sure it doesn't seize up on us or anything. And that is kind of why we're changing this. Alright, that hole needs to align with that pin right there. Which may or may not be easy to do. stuff onto this little round part yeah my bottle broke at the seam in the back here in case you're wondering what, <laughs> what that's about rather than change it you just kind of roll with it you know Screw assembly back in, washer and all. That'll hold it for us. Torque settings in the screw are uh, good and snug. Yep. So we know it's working just because it's retracting. So now we have the joy of rewinding it. Gonna need my holding rivet ready. See the hole there? It's supposed to line with the hole there. Originally all I was grabbing are those little ribs, you know, these things, which kind of work, but a little worrisome at the same time. So if you notice, I can't wind it this way without breaking anything, which means counterclockwise is the only way we can go. Now, since I just took this apart, I can get a pretty good feel of where it was. There is a certain number of turns you're supposed to do. But I don't have a manual for a motor this old, and I don't know what that's So that's going to happen. Prepare yourself for it. Anyway, I don't know how many number of turns we're supposed to go. That's not a good sound. So that's that's feeling good. 
I have little marks right here. It says arrow rope here. Arrow Evanrude rope here. What's this actually say? Arrow here, rope recoil, and then we have an E and a JE. So probably Johnson, Johnson Evanrude. <sighs> yeah, that makes sense. Put my rivet in through the back. That was took from top screw. Alright, rivets in. It's not gonna come apart on us again. Let me go wash my hands a little bit. This shouldn't be that hard. I'm gonna reinstall the rope now. It should slide right in there, which as you can see it does. Then I can get a little vice grips needle nose or a, a nail or whatever to slide that back up and put a little knot in the end. That should hold it. Yeah, looks good. Let's get the rivet out. I'm holding this. And we'll let it go back in. Took the whole thing. Might as well clean this up a little bit. Well, I reinstalled the starter pawl and the little spring, and we seem to be working again. I mean, we were working before, but now we seem to be working a little bit smoother. So let's get it reattached. Well, it's back together and in good working order. I don't think there was a problem with the starter spring anyway. I don't necessarily believe that the, that little bit of sticky grease was what held that starter from retracting. What I believe it is was all of the burrs on all the parts. I think they just, it just kind of hit an unlucky spot and just stuck together. Because it was, everything in there is just sharp. So I, when you deburred it all, it kind of worked a little better. I'm kind of thinking that just so little uses on that starter just didn't wear down the burrs and the metal just kind of stuck together for a bit. That's the only thing I can think of because that starter was in great shape. But it's clean now, so, you know, I mean, that's good. So anyway, any questions, let me know. But this video should show you how to fix your five and a half horsepower starter spring, should yours have an issue as well. Mine was a little, little unique, but we'll see if it happens again. All right, everybody. See you later.